reports for the sonic boom started pouring in from Nellis and other places to, the, to lay the blame on the Navy as foul control. We did not exist. <laughs> so I was, I was about like a uh, raven among a bunch of ducks for these, these people. First of all, I was the Army. My job was to shoot their tails down. I was on surface air missiles. It's a good thing, uh, Dennis, that I wasn't sitting there shooting those missiles. You would have made it home. <laughs> <laughs> it was a hole. <laughs> they, uh, my background was that I started a career as an intelligence specialist, and I, oh, I did a little deed over there that drew the attention of a, I was still about an E-4, drew the attention of a two-star general, and uh, he kind of adopted me when my rotation was up. He said, son, uh, you need to get into the electronics, and he urged me to uh, get into the missile field, which I did, and I got to Fort Bliss, Texas, and Went to my first school, lasted for a year, and I was going to Texas Western at night. So I was a full-time student. Got out of school, and they just started another one, and the one I just finished was already obsolete. It was a Nike Ajax, so I signed up for another year. Went through it. The time I got out of that, I had enough rank. They couldn't they just put me doing anything. They didn't have a sign for me, so I signed up for, the, for another one. And I started advancing into... Uh, I got interested in electronic countermeasures and electronic counter countermeasures, which is um, the jamming and the anti-jamming. And the, the planes do the uh, uh, ECM, it's electronic countermeasures, and our job is to uh, figure out what they're going to do and get through it. And that's your counter countermeasures. Anyway, I, I had gotten to become sort of an expert in this field, and uh, the CIA has started Project Palladium trying to evaluate the uh, capabilities of the Soviet radars around the world because we at that time we still didn't know what their capability was and we knew they'd moved some uh, uh, Soviet aircraft into Cuba. We didn't know about the missiles at that time and uh, Raytheon had just built the Hawk missile and we were still fine-tuning it. It wasn't ready to go operational so they uh, grabbed me to work with the team of them and we'd lock this, uh, load this missile up into the belly of a plane, take the nose cone off of it and head toward Cuba, and we get close in, we would start radiating the, uh, their planes with a CW signal, making them think there's the incoming missile coming at them. And they turn on their jammers, and, uh, and I'd watch that old the, the nose cone on my missile, and as soon as it, I could see the jamming was getting through to it, and it start drifting off, I'd start tweaking here and tweaking there, and we were recording all of this and learning how to get through their systems. And, uh, they, uh, after a couple of three times of this, they got wise to it, and they uh, took a couple of shots at us, so we had to knock it off. And, uh, but that called, that, that's the first time I worked for uh, Dr. Bud Whelan with the CIA, and who incidentally was the head of the Oxcar program later at Area 51. But to make a long story short, I got out of the service. I got disabled and got injured, and it ripped my military career, so I had all this electronic experience. So. NASA grabbed me to, for the NASA high range, tracking the X-15, the XB-70, with lo developing the lunar landing vehicles. The, we had the, what we call the lifting bodies. that was the um, uh, prototypes for the space shuttle. All of this was going on in the 60s, plus we started tracking the YF-12. We uh, I participated in the speed run that um, Bob uh, talked about. And tracking the... Um, X-15, we had the capability of recording velocity where most radar stations don't necessarily have that. They don't care. They just want to know where you're at and so they can hit you, track you. So I started getting calls from the agency. They didn't say where they called it from. They didn't say what. They are going to be tracking, but they said, we we got a plane we want you to track and record the velocity and don't let anyone know what you're doing. You lock the room, the doors to the room, go in and track it. Bundle it up and we'll come pick it up and that was the end of the story. They didn't tell me what was tracking. But uh, Beatty, I was at Beatty is where it's located, the radar site there. Well, we're not that far from Groom Lake and I and I'd get out of curiosity I'd get in on the radar. That really wasn't my job. I was a, more of a, at that time a well they called me a, a a hypersonic flight support specialist, which meant I knew tel telemetry, radar, communications data transmission, everything it took to run a tracking station. But I love radar. That was my, my background. So I go in there and I found out that something really, really fast flying out of, out of Groom Lake. <laughs> I, I picked it up one time. It, we couldn't pick up the beacon, but we could get, get a skin track on it just very briefly. But I noticed always before this fast dude took off, there's some 
slower planes to take off. And then what this was, the weather flights. They take off the F-101s and pretty soon here come that fast burger. And that, that was my it was a challenge for me to see if I could pick him up for, you know, 10 or 15 seconds at least. But uh, so we knew he was there, and it, but uh, it was no big secret with, with some of us. Most of the people at the station did not know this because they just they weren't cleared for it, but I did have special clearance. And, and also we knew when they moved the YF-12 to Edwards, they shared our control room. So we definitely knew that we had a Mark III plane. But what was interesting at that period of time, you know, this was during the, um, the space race, uh, the nuclear race. We had a lot of races going on with Russia. They were the bad boys. But we had three Mark III planes in, prog in, in the works. We had the A-12, the YF-12, and the one that I was working on primarily with the XB-70, the bomber. And it was many, many times the, the planes that these guys were flying. And we got it over Mark III. And that's the one we had a mid-air collision a few years later. And also we finally aborted the program. It was too expensive, and um, we knew it should be shot down. It, it, it came out sleep, but it was a great study for uh, high-speed transport, which later on the YF-12 took its place. And when they decided not to maintain it as an uh, interceptor, they took one of our tracking stations and converted it to long-range radar and would track it as a continuation of the XB-70 uh, pro uh, project. So.